Hi, I am Dr. Karthi Kane, consultant in neurology in Dubai. I am going to perform a minimally invasive surfactant procedure for this 27 weeks extremely mature baby that weighed uh, just 980 grams. This baby is on nasal continuous airway process of both from birth and is now 5 years old. The baby is on nasal CPAP support, pressure of 6 nm and we started with an FAO 204.3 and that has been increased to above 40% as the baby has started desaturating. As the FAO requirements have gone up within 6 hours of life, I am escalating the respiratory support by the surfactant administration. For this, Minimally invasive surfactant uh, procedure. We should be very careful not to dislodge the CPAP delivery system even inadvertently, as uh, this is what that differentiates the misprocedure from the earlier in sure way of surfactant administration. I am going to do the best using the LISA catheter. The LISA catheter is less invasive surfactant administration catheter. I call it the blue marrow. Here is the LISA catheter. It is 1.7 millimeter in a diameter and 13 centimeters long. It is like a thin a normal endotracheal tube but of the size 1.7 millimeter. The equivalent of such an endotracheal tube is not available for us and even the smallest size that is 2 mm endotracheal tube that is of 2 millimeter in a diameter is thick and has an outer diameter of 2.7 millimeter but the difference is the LISA catheter is uh, of a different material different color and is for the specific purpose for performing the procedure of administering surfactant. Now here in uh, visualization the glottis the laryngoscope is unavoidable. We need to use a laryngoscope because surfactant has to be delivered into the lungs via the trachea. There is no other way to reach the lungs. This is a direct acting trach. This is not a trach which acts on the pulmonary capillaries or the blood surrounding it. It is acts on the alveolar capillary interface. It has to be on the air exchanging epithelium to be distilled onto it. So, because this laryngoscopy procedure is, uh, is irritant to say the least to the baby, the duration of the application of the blade has to be minimized. That means you need to be very fast. Watch it while the baby is on CPAP. We can make out the baby is working hard with obvious retractions. We note the subcostal retractions which indicates diaphragmatic overactivity against a solid lung. You have to be able to look at and locate the glottis and then insert the catheter, this catheter quickly and be able to withdraw the blade as soon as possible. I am going to use uh, zero zero infant laryngoscope blade. I am not considering sedation or parental analgesia as I do the misprocedure faster and quicker. Here, what I am going to use this is the bovine servant, surfactant servanta, which is uh, available in a postology in the vial of 8 ml at strength of 25 mg per ml. The recommended dose is 4 ml per kilo. The dose recommended will be for this baby 4 ml. I am going to double the dose because wastage of uh, surfactant shall be avoided. The surfactant is essential but costly medicine. But uh, it is a safe medicine with no reported serious adverse reactions. So I prefer to err on the higher side as it is a safe drug. And also, in many studies, it all proven to have a dose-dependent effect. To prevent reflux of surfactant and subsequent uh, wastage, I give a bolus of air in 10 ml liquids to disperse the surfactant on down 
to the air exchanging surface. The baby is uh, aligned for the procedure and the CPAP machine or circuit is also adjusted so that uh, it comes through the, the baby head facing the side, side wall of the incubator. I am going to perform the procedure through the by opening the the one side flap of the incubator in total. This incubator has got uh, a thermal curtain effect and it maintains the heat even though one side wall of the incubator is totally flipped down. Now the setting of uh, servo air mode I setting at 35.4. Baby is uh, covered to prevent uh, thermal loss. I have already given a loading dose of uh, caffeine citrate. Respiratory stabilization is a neonatologist's first priority and after that only comes the uh, procedures especially the umbilical vein or arterial catheterization for supporting the baby hemodynamically. Right now we are starting the procedure. I already told we have markings up to 9 centimeters. There are 9 divisions and uh, we normally have to put one marking down the glottis for this immature baby. A bigger baby might be in between 1 and 2 divisions. I am uh, going to visualize the glottis, give surfactant through the catheter, give air flushes and remove the lisa catheter. CPAP has to be continued all throughout the procedure. Now see I visualize the glottis with laryngoscopy. Now once I touch the baby's uh, larynx, visualization, the baby's become labile. Baby desaturates with a drop in heart rate. So I am uh, removing the laryngoscope. Establishing the baby again back on CPAP with mouth closed and also increasing the FO2 to 0.5. We should avoid an improvement in the clinical condition of a baby and ensure normoxemia before proceeding ahead with any procedure. I always insist that a dedicated team member keeps a watchful eye on the monitor display when I am focusing and concentrating on the procedure and uh, the responsibility is cast upon that person to alert me and the team in case of drops in saturation or heart rate and I keep my ears tuned to the alarms. Here when we are emptying the stomach before the procedure as distension of the stomach has a splinting effect on the diaphragmatic movement. There is an important aspect of nursing care of babies on CPAP to prevent CPAP belly that will negate the respiratory support given by CPAP. Okay, now see the saturations are going up 94% precise and baby is stable for the procedure. Right, we succumb the airway and clear the airway. After visualizing the glottis with the laryngoscope double zero blade, I gently insert the lisa catheter. It's quick, it's just a single attempt. It's no big deal in it. At my experience, uh, once you visualize the glottis, it's defined the triangular cartilage in the surroundings instead of the lisa catheter. Check the position. Even though you may assume how many readings going in is difficult to assume. Always check the position. How to check the position of the lisa catheter in situ? It's not a integral tube. Still, a, we can um, slow inject the air, attach a syringe hub and then uh, listening with a stethoscope the air into on either side. Right. Then I administer 4 ml of Cervantal the same position and then flush it down with a slow 10 ml air pulse. I auscultate and confirm and there is a continuous hissing sound of airflow post the procedure of this 4 ml. I'll say there is an ASM CPAP as is uh, normally heard with the CPAP baby. So I can confirm that this I can hear this hissing sound even with the Lisa catheter in situ. I am not going Lisa catheter. Still, CPAP is being delivered in the peridisa catheter area. This is what differentiates this from insu technique. The insu technique, the endotrical tube, which is big, it keeps the focal cord abducted, doesn't allow the movement, 
and obviously sepa cannot go through there's you know not enough space left the hole is filled hole is filled with the ventricular tube there's no enough space around it for the air to be delivered to be effective distending pressure difference between lisa and enso right now i check whether i can double the dose i had planned to double the dose but maybe it will be stable enough to receive that next 4 ml aliquot i see the vital signs are stable and i give the next dose of 4 ml servanta and give the gentle air flash also till there is no regurgitation of surfactant and now the procedure is complete i will look at the monitor the heart rate is steady but saturation has dropped 68% don't get scared this normal heart rate is steady so you can still pick up the baby bring up the baby saturation faster remove the ileus catheter baby is stimulated to take a good respiratory effort and the mouth is sealed to achieve the maximum effect of necessary pap and from now on monitor displays for real time wait with pause breath for us baby is breathing within 1 and 1/2 minutes the saturation picks up to more than 90% we can notice the remarkable improvement in the retractions and the seesaw respiratory pattern that was consistent with increased work of breathing that was present at the start of the procedure now there is remarkable improvement in it so this completes the procedure it's a success to give you a brief recap of what i did i used a lisa catheter for this minimally invasive surfactant administration procedure administered the bovine surfactant servanta at two times the usual recommended dose and now the baby is restored to its original nursing position support means the incubator is the walls of the incubator are closed and baby is uh, retained to its usual nursing position i expect some reflex of surfactant as the volume administered is higher than with other considered preparations like posen surfactant this i check by a simple bedside tool by aspirating the stomach post procedure after taking care that the stomach is emptied before the start of the procedure that we did we check now and 5 ml of air is let out and then another 5 ml of air the 10 ml of air in the tummy when the plunger of the syringe is released and if the plunger is passively pulled in by the vacuum effect then that is the end point of the check there is absolutely no reflex as evident by no surfactant in the stomach this confirms that 
8 amylosulfata has been successfully administered by the lysol catheter to this extremely low birth weight baby of 980 grams. So summarize the procedure I did was minimally invasive surfactant therapy otherwise known as the less invasive surfactant administration and lysol using a lysol catheter which is a specifically designed uh, conduit for performing this procedure and I give 8 ml of bovine surfactant servant to this 980 grams baby and we had successfully performed this with no reflex of the surfactant. This is Dr. Kothikin, Cancer Neurology working in Dubai. Thank you.